Or (laughs) (laughs) excuse me, what? I can't get oven nectar and adagio teas anymore in the giant tin. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Everything's fine. It's not fun. Uh, you're over there having a nervous breakdown, so... Uh, I don't know what to do. Oh, I am not editing two hours podcast this time. I'll fight somebody. How dare you? Did you <laughs> Snapchat me? We're in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> Let me swallow first. That's what she said. <laughs> you can't put that oh, in there. Oh, that's so cute. I'm definitely putting it in there. Oh, I'm going to screenshot that. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> We're never going to start. Never. It's going to be two hours again. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Here we go. Welcome to Our Life in Books, where we talk about our lives, books, and everything in between. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Samantha. And we're cousins. Yay. Um, Today I am... Dr- I just said, um. <laughs> Way to start the show. <laughs> today I am drinking Elven Nectar. It's from... Tea. Oh, yeah. Tea. Sorry. <laughs> just, <laughs> just so everyone knows it's not real Elven, elven Nectar. <laughs> I, I milked an Elven earlier. Uh, from Riddle's Tea Shop. It is peach, apricot, and caramel. It's my favorite tea ever. It's it's very good. It's so good. Mm, you have a horde of teas, and I'm going to drink all of them. What if are you I drinking? can't get enough. Okay, so I'm actually drinking Misty Mountain Brew. Ooh. It's another blend by Riddle's Tea Shop. Um, it's got green chai, snowbud, chocolate, and cinnamon. Green chai. Mm-hmm. It's actually really good. That does like sound it's, good. It just smells fresh, mm-hmm. like mountain air. <laughs> Oh my! <laughs> but anyway, so it it is a Riddle's Tea Shop tea, though I don't think she's got it in her shop yet. Mm-hmm. And it used to be on Adagio. Yeah, and I think mine's on her shop, right? I think so. Yeah, I think she's got a sample of it in her okay. shop. I'm assuming this one's coming. I'm, yeah. I'm assuming that's why it's not on mm-hmm. Adagio because it's coming to her shop. So we'll link her shop down in the show notes. Definitely check it out. All of her teas are so amazing. Mm-hmm. They're so good, and I love the designs like on the all of them. I'm the biggest fangirl of yeah. her. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you reading? I read two books this week. Um, the first one is Burning Violet by A.P. Watson, and it's a part of a blog tour. Um, it's about this woman who is an accountant at a law firm, and she's also a secretary, and she's studying to be a paralegal. And she's come up from nothing, and you know she's working really hard, and... One and she really doesn't trust men because of her history. Because of her history, mm-hmm. and she goes out to a bar one night and she runs into a guy and they hit it off right away. It turns out he's her new boss. Oh no! So it's just how they decide to just be friends and like you know you know obviously that's mm-hmm. probably easier said than done. And it was a really good book. Um, so is it a romance? It is a romance. Uh, <laughs> duh. No, it's um, it's actually a sci-fi. No. <laughs> <laughs> he's um, an alien. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I enjoyed that um, AP made her smart and goal-oriented, and she mm-hmm. cared more about her job than the love interest. You know oh, what I mean? Okay. Yeah. So it's just like, she wasn't like, oh, my God, my boss, of course I'm going to be with him. She was like, no, like, I worked hard to be here. I'm not going to yep. jeopardize it. And he felt the same way. He was like, no, I worked hard to be here. I, I'm not yeah. going to jeopardize it. So it was, I really enjoyed the book. Um, it was a really quick and good read, and. I recommend anyone check it out. Uh, what are you reading? Because the last book I read was The Darkest Star, and we both read it. <laughs> yes. Um, so I'm, I don't know, I have like 5% left in this book, like okay. not much. Um, but it's called Empire of Sand. Mm. Hold on, i got to get the author. It's Tasha Suri. Is the okay, author. yeah, I'll so really, I've this read this is, book. This is her debut book. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so good. Like, it's so good. What's it about? It's... An epic fantasy, so Ooh. magic, like <gasps> in a you know brand new world, and like it's, I, don't know, I feel like it's hard to describe because there's so much happening. Mm-hmm. So it follows Mare is how I'm saying her name. I don't know if that's right. It's M E H R. Okay. So Mer or Mare? I mean, been I would say Mare. Mare. Okay. Continue. So it follows her, and she is the daughter of the governor of their like area of the empire. Okay. But her mother, she's the illegitimate child because her mother is from a like a clan or I guess I don't know how to say it. Like a, she's from a, a people who don't marry. Like the women don't marry. The, the women are the head of the clan and like they don't marry. Oh. So her mom and dad never married. 
So she's illegitimate, and her mom ran off to go back and be with her clan when she was young. So, but she still wants to know that heritage of her mom's side mm-hmm. of the family. And so she's been learning it and practicing the dances that they do because they do dances um, like f- for the spirits and stuff. Like it's okay. kind of a way that they worship and yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. So anyway, she, so she gets forced into a marriage and she has to go live in the temple with like, because there's a. In the same empire? Yeah. Different. Okay. So the the empire has an emperor, obviously, okay, yeah. right? And then so he's the he's like the he governs the people. And then there's a he's called the maha. Uh huh. He's the like the spiritual leader. Okay. So she has to go live at his temple, and she kind of finds out that the spirits and all that stuff and everything that he's doing is not what everyone thinks he's doing. Oh. He is the scariest villain. He's terrible and awful, and that's probably a little bit spoilery, but it's so good. Mm-hmm. It's so good. It's you so and your good. villains. I um, don't like him at all, but yeah. she's amazing. And then there's a little bit of a romance between her and the guy that she is forced into marriage with. And oh, I love that. It's just so, like, pure and, yeah, ugh, it's achy. It's just so good. Oh, I can't wait to read it. <sighs> it sounds so good. Yeah, so uh, The Darkest Star. Yes. So we both got done reading this Mm -hmm. and we have two different perspectives because I read the Lux series Mm -hmm. and you did not. So what did you think? So it was really good. It's so Evie has no idea what's going on for most of the book. Yeah. And that was me. Like I was uh, like I totally understood Evie's point of view because I I don't know what Lux are or Luxon. Luxon. I don't know what they are. Like I had no idea what origins were and she's learning all this stuff and so was i yeah so yeah it was really like it's a it's it's a great introductory to the series because you don't have to read the other ones to understand it yeah and so i was kind of sad because i had not sad but i like i read the series Mm -hmm. so i knew i had figured out pretty early what happened Mm -hmm. um because i knew what happened in the other series yeah so i but i still really enjoyed it like i got to i you know it's nice to hear like the characters are still like there and i really did want to know more about luke and because in the book he's just very like you don't you don't ever get to know him Mm because he keeps people at a distance except for evie and so it's just nice to like figure that out but i i really enjoyed it i like it ended and i was like more. I know. Can I have another book it's, now, please? It's one of those books that's like so addictive. Like you yeah. just, you just want to keep reading it. So is the Lux reading series. Their sta- that's, their why stories. I'm, that's why I'm saying you need to read the Lux yes. series now because it doesn't spoil anything. Like you just learn more about the, like the other, other characters. characters. So yeah. you learn more about, um, I was going to ask if you recognize any yeah, of them. Like the a lot two of guys them. that are with him. Yep. Okay. Yep. You learn a names, lot about but. them and why they are the way they are. You learn about Emery. Oh, yeah, um, I really liked her. You learn a little bit about her friend, um, Zoe. Yeah. You learn a little bit about her. But, yeah, Emery, you learn about her. So it's just, like, it's really nice to, like, see the characters again. Mm-hmm. But I really want you to read the Lux series. I'll reread it with you. Oh, <laughs> I need to get it. Um, yeah. But I really like recommend a, this if you like, um, like, fantasy, like paranormal fiction. fantasy, yeah. urban fantasy, aliens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, aliens. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed it. It's good. Like I said, it's just addictive. Yeah, it's an addictive read. It's one of those you just, you want to read in one sitting because you can't stop reading it. Mm -hmm, Because you can't, you want to know what happens. Yeah. What happens now? What happens now? Yep. All right. New releases this week. Yes. So, (laughs) well, I mean, we don't have to talk about all of them. No, I think we just briefly mentioned the ones that we're excited about. Yeah, so the one I think I'm most excited about, well, that's not true. Anyways, the one that I've read... (laughs) That's why I'm excited to talk about one, it. I know which one this is. Um, the Broken Girls by Simone St. James. So I actually read it last year when it came out in hardback. And today it's out in paperback. Oh, nice. So, you know, it's more accessible. Um, but it's really good. It's a, like, suspense thriller. It's set in two different timelines. Um, one's in 1950 and then the other one's in 2014. Okay. So back in 1950, this place that's kind of the center of the story used to be a girl's school. And it was for, like, troubled girls, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah, Quotation troubled, marks right. over that. <clears throat> but um, something happens. And I don't, I, I don't want to spoil anything. So I don't remember for sure if it's mentioned right in the beginning. But something happened okay. back then. And you, you know that something happens. But so then in 2014, we're following Fiona. And she, her sister was murdered... 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. So, you know, she's older, she, but she's still dealing with the death of her sister. And it happened 
Or no, her body was found on the grounds of this place. Oh, wow. Okay. And I'm trying to remember. Um, so the boyfriend was convicted of the murder, mm-hmm. but she doesn't, like, she, she's not really sure if he's the one who did it or not. And like yeah. I said, it's all still haunting her. And so she finds out, because she's a journalist, and she finds out that, that the place is being destroyed. They're going to tear it down, and she doesn't want them to. And she she kind of wants this story about this place, and she wants to write about it. So, she, you know, she kind of she gets involved, and there's maybe ghosts, uh-huh. and it's just really good. It's a oh, suspense it does sound really thriller. Good. I love it. I was, I was reading that in my suspense um, phase last year. Oh. <laughs> That sounds really interesting. I yeah. just marked it as I need to read that. <laughs> yeah, it's out in paperback, so get Perfect. on it. Yeah. And then another one that's come out is Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. Well, it came out last week. but Right, it did come out last we week, but we kind of slipped our talk about it. Yeah. Neither one of us have read that series yet, right? No, but okay. we're big fans of Marissa Meyer. Right, so and I mean, it's number two in the series. Yes. And I have, okay, so I have the first book, and then I have the arc of Arch Enemies, and it's on my list for this month. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Oh, okay. But it just sounds really good. And since neither one of us have read it, I don't know if we'll really go into too no. much detail about the synopsis. But if you've read it, let us know what you oh, think. Yes, because I it's it's on my to be because it's like list um, as well. oh what's it say secret identities extraordinary powers she wants vengeance he wants justice like Ooh, sold yeah All right, sign me up <laughs> and one of the last books we want to talk just mention briefly is that Michelle Obama yes. is coming out with a book right has come called, out with a book right yeah Wait, today yeah today. today that's what I thought it's called Becoming oh. and um so it's a memoir and yeah it just sounds really good I well, mean and it's Michelle she's, Obama right she's amazing. Come on. So, <laughs> it's on my TBR. Mm-hmm. I'll get to it someday. Oh, I know. All right. So, what did you get this week? So, um, I think my... <laughs> daughter butt. So, I think my my like favorite cool thing that I got this week. So, if you've heard of Book Sparks, or if you've not heard of Book Sparks, um, they are like a publicity company. They do a lot for, you know, books and promoting authors and stuff. And they do reading challenges. Mm, so, yeah. I'm part of the um fall reading challenge so they send you know books and we help promote them and we talk about all these awesome books but anyway so this week they sent river bodies and i don't know who the author is i'll find that but it'll be in the show notes Mm -hmm. and along with that they sent a little kit and it's got a swell thermos in it it's like one of those like metal thermos things Mm -hmm. and it's got flowers on it it's really cute so that was my favorite thing this week (laughs) (laughs) yeah okay it's cute i love it uh this week i bought um, Children Shouldn't Play with Dead Things by Martina McGatney. Uh, I had the I have the Kindle book, but I mm-hmm. really wanted the physical copy because it's one of those big, big paperbacks that just mm-hmm. like flops open mm-hmm. and it's so pretty. Oh, it's so pretty, and I was like, I really want to reread the series, so I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only one I don't have, so I'm so yeah. jealous. And that's now I'm missing the second one, so I ordered that one too. Um, <laughs> So that'll probably be next week. <laughs> uh, I'm really excited to read that series again. I just, I, I'm a little obsessed with. It's, it's so easy to be obsessed with it, and I think there's so many things, there's so many details in the book that mm-hmm. I'm, that I want to reread and find out again. If yeah. that makes any sense, when you like reread or rewatch something a lot, and you're like, oh, I miss that. Like, I feel like this is one of those books that I'm gonna do that with a lot. Yeah, we need to do a reread because I still haven't read the third one yet, and I have. and the fourth one's coming out soon, isn't yeah, it? Because I rage read the third one. <laughs> Oh, I wanted to read it. I just didn't get a chance. Mm-hmm. That's the story of my life. It's gonna be on my tombstone. <laughs> like it's all gonna be the like books she didn't read. It's gonna be the te- it's gonna be her her reading challenge. <laughs> oh, Did she didn't pa- make it. So a lot of I, a lot of you probably have good reads. If you don't, you need it. It helps you keep track of all of your books where you've read them, where they're at. If you gave them away. If oh you lent them to it's someone, cute. yeah, it's amazing. And there's um, a reading challenge every year, mm-hmm. and Elizabeth hasn't got to her. Yet. Yes, I did. You got I hit yours? it. Yeah, oh, it's 75 nice. books, and I hit it last week. I think. Nice. I so, think the darkest star actually was my really yeah, my 75th. So book. I had a reading challenge less than hers. So I was only 50. So I got mine a while oh. ago. But I'm up to 93 books right Holy now. Holy bucket! Yeah, because I've been reading a lot of series, and like that kind of builds because I yeah. Just, Rage, well, and two, when you read, like, you don't read a book over the course of a week like I do. <laughs> like, no. you're like, I'm going to read this book, and I'm going to finish it right now. <laughs> yeah, because I need to know what happens. I can't, because uh, then my, for some reason, my mind will only think about that book. Yeah. And so I'll be like, I'll bring it out at dinner in front of people, and I'm like, no, I, I need to read this. too, but, like, I can't, I can't always focus when other people are talking. Oh, and see, like, I focus well when other people are around. I don't know why the noise helps me, like, 
just focus on it depends what I'm on doing. what it is like this um this the fantasy i'm reading the empire of sand oh yeah um like i couldn't read that when other people are talking because there's just so much to the world that i can't oh. like i have to get into it mm-hmm. but there's other ones i guess i can but yeah i remember when we were at book on and you started reading a book and i fell asleep and we got up in the morning you're like yeah i finished that book i was like you just started it what do you mean you finished it like <laughs> i stayed up till like 3 30 in the morning and i was like i can't sleep i need to finish How do you it do? like if i get comfortable at all and i'm reading uh, i fall asleep <laughs> like, <laughs> well and all uh i saw this because wasn't it like the weird one that i was like i'm not sure about this book i'm yeah. gonna keep reading it <laughs> Kept reading, kept I woke up it. and you're like, I finished that book. I'm like, what? when? <laughs> While when? you were sleeping. <laughs> oh God. When do you sleep, vampire? I don't sleep. <laughs> I think that's my problem is I stay up reading and then I wake up in the morning. I'm like, why am I so tired? And it's like, it's only been four hours. Got it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so this week's theme is auto by authors. Um, Elizabeth introduced me to this concept. So why don't mm-hmm. you explain to everybody what it is? So auto by as in B. You, why? Yes, not. Because <laughs> my um. husband, we said it, we explained it to him. Well, actually, I said it to him and I was like, okay, so if I say this, do you know what it means? And he's like, autobiography? I'm like, no, no. no. <laughs> so it's authors that you would buy their book no matter what it is that they wrote. And you're going to, like, you hear about their new book coming out, you're going to buy it. You don't even have to read the synopsis. You exactly. know you're going to get it. You know you're going to buy it, so you might as well pre-order it right This now. is, like, one of them. This is how I describe it, one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. I said, if she wrote the telephone book, I would read it. Yeah. Because of her good. writing. So, uh-huh. that's, Definitely. so that's an auto buy author. <laughs> Yeah, so we kind of wrote down a couple of our favorites. Um, mm-hmm. We have more than this list, but that would just take the entire night to yeah. go over them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> the first one I just want to talk about really quick because it's a book that I ordered was Martina McGatney. Yeah. She's one of ours. Yep. And she um, is incredible. Um, the world is definitely all supernatural creatures all in one place. So if you're really into that, and she creates new ones that I have actually never read about, like mm-hmm. – um necromancers and stuff like that and i and when you first banshees too banshees yes and when you first pitched me the book you were like oh here's a list of all the characters (laughs) don't be overwhelmed there's a ton of them you're gonna love every one of them Mm -hmm. and you're right like so i wrote down all the characters so i could like go back and like see their relationships yeah but now it's like it's so easy to me to understand like see the relationship and and see how they interact and i'm in love with all the characters and i don't want anything to happen to any of them (laughs) she jokingly made a post um one of my favorite things about her is that she has this um facebook group yes card um, martina's deadlings and it's a very funny like sarcastic jokey page Mm -hmm. and we can all just talk and stuff like that and And she she posts um like sneak peeks yeah sneak peeks and cover art soon like Mm -hmm. early it's really interesting but i love she kind of one one poll. She was like, "Who should I kill off next?" Oh God! <laughs> Vote for it, you know, because you know how authors kill off their characters. So I really enjoyed it. Did you see her post this week where she said um, she wants to put a shifter in the book, like oh. a, a new shifter? And she's like, "But what's like a off the wall shifter that you've never heard of?" You know that I could add. So people were giving ideas, and she said, "If I like your idea, I'll." You know, I might use it in the book. And did you see any blah, blah. ideas? Um, uh, I put an remember? idea in there. Oh, what'd you put? What'd you put? Hedgehog. <laughs> oh my god! Of course you would. <laughs> so he shifts into like, oh, guys, I'm ready for battle. Shifts into a hedgehog. <laughs> a cute little hedgehog. They can hide. I don't know. <laughs> but other people were ha- like, they had really good ideas. Well, they you know, have. like um, like a fly or something that you know, like you could easily get away, and you're this tiny little thing, and you could be a literal fly on the wall, yeah, oh, and like listening on conversations, and like, or some kind of bird would be really cool because again, you could fly away. Yeah, the bird would be cool, like a crow or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So anyway, but people had some really good ideas. Well, I'm have to go on there and write something. I have to think of something. Not yeah. hedgehog, slug. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> could you imagine? Like that would be the worst shape shifter. <laughs> I'm a slug. I'm a sl- or like a cow. <laughs> oh, no, I'm a cow. I, what do I do now? <laughs> Eat some grass? I don't know. <laughs> it reminds me of like um, Emperor's New Groove when they're throwing the po- when he's tra- trying all the potions at the end or trying to turn back into a human and he turns into like a little bird or a whale and he's like, don't look at me. <laughs> So she's she's I just thought I'd get her out of the way since we've been, we talked about it earlier. Mm-hmm. But I yeah, I'm a big fan of that series and I think anybody who loves supernatural creatures would really enjoy that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Who's our next one? 
So, let's see. Should we talk about Lainey Taylor next? Yeah, <laughs> Lainey Taylor. She was one of, I say one of, I'm, one of my very first introductions into like YA, mm-hmm. fantasy, and like just one of those first authors I fell in love with, I think, once I started the whole bookstagram thing. Yeah. And so I think the, the whole reason that we even started, well, that I even started reading her is because we were going to BookCon in yes. 2016. Yes. And so they, they announced the authors that were going to be there. And I was like, well, we have to read some of these. Like, we yeah. can't just show up mm-hmm. and like. And not know anybody. Right. So, yeah. So I read um, Daughter of Smoke and Bone. Yeah. That series. And I was just in love. Mm-hmm. I was so in love. But she's one of those authors. Like, I don't care what she writes. I'm going to read it because her writing is so lyrical. Yeah. Like, it's almost, it's almost poetic Mm -hmm. it's just so pretty and yeah but it's not overly flowery or anything it's just it's perfect (laughs) (laughs) i want to say that when i read daughter smoke and bone i really could see you in the character Mm and that makes any sense like i could see how you related to that character yeah i related to her enough but i was like oh yeah like she the the elizabeth could definitely relate (laughs) to this character but I really like her worlds, too. Oh, that yeah, was the definitely. other thing. Because her I worlds read, are interesting. I've never read anything like it. No. It's just so, it's so interesting. So um, her other series, Strange the Dreamer, mm-hmm. um, the first book came out last year, and then Muse of Nightmares came out this year, and I am a terrible fan. I haven't read it yet. Oh, we own it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, well, I I've read Strange the Dreamer. I just oh. haven't had read the second one. But See, I haven't read either, but I own all of them. <laughs> it's another one. It's just like the, the world is amazing, mm-hmm. and... The characters are just, they're all fleshed out and they're all individualistic. And Yeah. Um, I do think it's kind of funny when I was reading um, Strangely Dreamer, I was like, does she really like have a thing for the color blue? Yeah. Because Carew's hair is blue. Mm-hmm. And then the, the hmm, what are they? Like gods? No, they're not gods. They're the children of gods, I believe. Okay. But anyway, the, they're blue. Oh. There's like six of them, and they're all blue too. Like their skin is blue. Yeah. So I think that's funny. I was like, she must really like the color blue. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. And she's actually the first author I ever met because oh, we ran yeah. it because we ran into her before we had any book signed. Well, she's really like easy to spot on yeah. the floor at BookCon. Right pink hair. Because right. weren't we like we were doing something else, and I was like, oh my god, it's Lainey Taylor. Uh huh. Oh my god, it's Lainey Taylor. Yep. So and, we went over to her. And, <laughs> and I talked to her because I didn't know who she was because at the time I was still just starting to read her books. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. And afterwards I was like, I met Lainey Taylor. <laughs> and that was the one book too that I brought with us to Chicago to have her sign because yeah. she was one of the few authors that you could take. You could bring a book from home. You didn't have to buy a yeah. book there. And I bought the book. Yeah. Yep. That was awesome. Yeah. So um, anything she writes, I will read it. And word is she's working on a new book. That's what she's been posting about on instagram oh really yeah i oh think she's God, that's exciting i think she's just starting with like the initial ideas but still like, yeah here for it that's crazy <laughs> so what's the next one the next one let's talk about kendara blake okay deal oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, so i one i enjoy her personality mm-hmm. so much yeah she is as hilarious. a person yes as a person she's just like She's just just like her books, I couldn't – I wanted more. When we uh-huh. went to those panels with her in it, I wanted to go to more panels with her because she's so fun and you, you just – draw you're drawn to, uh-huh. to her. And she's got that, like, um, sarcastic sense of humor yes, that I was like, us. we could be best friends. Exactly. Like, very <laughs> sarcastic. Like, she told this story at – um, at BookCon, finding a poisonous plant. The new house that she yes. bought had a tree in the backyard. Mm-hmm. And she was convinced it was poisonous mm-hmm. because she's working on three dark crowns. And, right. And, and her, all that. her husband was like, no, you're crazy. And she's like, no, I'm not. It's poisonous. And so she like did a bunch of research and found mm-hmm. out it actually was poisonous. Yep. Was just like such a thing just to like she, prove it to him. Wasn't she like terrified that her dogs were going to eat something from it and then yeah. like, you know, die because it's poisonous? Exactly. So yeah. But yeah. she was right, and didn't she say that they removed the tree? Mm-hmm. Like, they had it removed, because yep. she's right. It she is. was right. <laughs> <laughs> so I've read Anna Dressed in Blood, and so mm-hmm. have you. Now, yeah. I haven't read Girl of Nightmares. I just finally got it. It's and then, good. obviously, we both own all the all of the Three Dark Crown yep. books, because they're amazing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you haven't read Two Dark Reigns. That's the most recent one, the, um, the third installment right. of Three Dark Crowns. Yep. Sequels are so hard. Like, series are so hard to keep up with. Because unless, they come out. Yeah. <laughs> unless like, you find it at the end of it. And I found lately, too, unless I'm reading it for review or as an arc, 
I'm likely not going to get to it for a while. If it's for fun, it's very hard to get to. Yeah. Like, The Darkest Star, I rage read that because I got the box and I was like, I can't wait. And you had read it, so. Like, I might have time within the next couple months because I don't have a lot of review books on my list. But at the same time, it's going to be the holidays and it's going to be tax season Mm -hmm. and forget it. But um, so anyway, back to Kendara Blake. Mm -hmm. She also wrote another series, The Goddess of War, which neither one of us have read. No, and I want I want to read it. Yes. So I think that's another thing, that's another, like, um, through line in her books is that, like, little bit of darkness. Uh I mean, it's obviously spelled out in Three Dark Crowns. Like, it's called Three Dark Crowns. But, you know, Anna dressed in blood, uh, goddess of war. Mm -hmm. They all sound dark. And the the two that we've read are kind of dark. I think that she likes to play with that kind of darkness. Mm -hmm. Like, it's still a good book and they're still, like heroines and you know and and stuff but it's but still it's like, very dark but it's also gray you know it's yeah. not it's not good and bad and yeah it's all everyone's in a like a gray area mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah she's she's definitely one of the ones and i also enjoy that you can go with with all these authors you can read multiple stories that they've written mm-hmm. and still feel that like yeah you know it's them yeah you know it's mm-hmm. them that's what i was trying yep. to say. thank you yeah yeah and she's also good at creating like i guess i don't necessarily want to live on fenburn island because of Absolutely how terrible not. it is but i do want to have the powers that she describes the three yes. <laughs> i mean i don't uh, i don't know the poisoner is the only one that i'm like Ugh. yeah because you can never use that for good yeah well and unless you're um, going after murders i guess you know that the scene in the beginning of that book when they're describing her trying to get used to the poison yeah it was awful i hated <laughs> it so much i felt so bad for her but i really want a familiar so yes there's that yes <laughs> what book can i just read that has familiars in it oh not for not book um sabrina oh yeah she has fam- she, she she has familiar yep, she's got to choose her familiar no or something she doesn't so she's supposed to choose it uh that we're talking about the netflix show the revamp mm-hmm. of sabrina the teenage witch and um, she actually is supposed to choose her familiar, but she decides to go to the forest and oh, ask the right. familiar to choose her, and that's yep. when Salem comes. He chooses her. Mm-hmm. It's scary though that when he chooses her, the oh the the goblin that he is or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's creepy. Okay, I <laughs> think we should talk about Rick Riordan next. And I don't okay. know if you've read of him. I have. You I have. have. What read... have you read? Okay, what's it called? Because I know I was the little... first five Percy Jackson books. Oh, you have. Okay, yeah. good. Because I know I was for a while there. I was like ragey like you need to read his books and i did read those and i really think those are ones that like um i'm gonna recommend to my boys oh yeah your boys are gonna love they're gonna love it like i really liked it but i could also tell that the target audience was a little bit younger yeah so it was really fun and adventurous and they're gonna love it Mm -hmm. but i do want to continue though and read the other ones because i they follow him yep right so he gets older. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And there's more fighting and stuff, mm-hmm. I would say, in the in the Heroes of Olympus. There's a lot more adult stuff that happens. Um, and I – so, one, I love Greek mythology. I've always loved learning about that kind of stuff. So that mm-hmm. was first what drew me to these books. I, you're right. You said adventurous. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoy how it – brought back like the child in me where I was mm-hmm. like oh I always wanted to like fight with a sword you know what I mean or like do all that kind of stuff so do all that stuff and then be back by bedtime exactly. or whatever <laughs> yeah so that's why I really I was I really liked it and I I liked the movies mm-hmm. that that you got to like visually see these little stories come to life so I enjoy him and I still so he's still writing his the newest book um because so doing it's series so it's Percy Jackson yes and then Heroes of Olympus yeah, Heroes and of then Olympus. Kane and Chronicles? then the Kane Chronicles are actually about another um, a brother and a sister duo, and that's more of Egyptian. So do we meet them in the Percy books? No. Or they're no, completely no. separate? They're completely separate, okay. but there are some books that that cross over. Mm. So that's interesting. And then there's also the Trials of Apollo and Separate uh, also. That's separate also. So it's about Apollo. He gets kicked out of Zeus, Zeus get mad. Zeus gets mad at him and kicks him out of heaven. No, no, it's not heaven. But the equivalent <laughs> yeah, yeah. of heaven in Greek mythology, and takes away his power. So he's just trying to like deal with that. Um, See, Magnus and- chasing the gods of Asgard. Um, oh, you know, everyone okay. knows what Asgard is from Thor. So it's kind of like okay. not everyone knows. See, this is my this is my issue. Blink, look at from Elizabeth <laughs> when I mentioned Asgard. I, for whatever reason, Greek mythology. Like I've always been interested, but none gods and all that stuff none of it's stuck in my head so really every time it's mentioned i'm like wait who's that again oh Who? yeah and see like i really enjoy that kind of stuff i think that's why i read it because like 
um, Magnus Chase is actually like um, a different a different sort of character where he doesn't want to fight, mm. but he has the powers to, and so he's trying to choose good and he's trying to choose the peaceful way. Mm-hmm. And so that's a, so he's like pulling out all these new characters, which is very interesting. I noticed that I'm not more. I think you're more of that way, and I'm more of like Percy Jackson. I want to fight with a sword, <laughs> not like let's be peaceful and not fight. But I'm, I really enjoy and um, I really enjoy the book still. I but I love Greek mythology, so I think as long as he sticks with that, I'll mm-hmm. read everything that he reads. So I have this little um, fun fact when I was researching Rick Riordan just to know more about him for this podcast, and he actually started the reason he started writing Percy Jackson is because he would read Greek myths to mm-hmm. his daughter for for bedtime and he ran out and she said well why don't you write your own oh and so he that's where Percy Jackson came from is he wanted to write his own for his daughter oh my goodness yeah so, so I, that was really interesting. I guess I'm curious what he did before that um he was a prof he was a or he was a teacher oh, okay and so also his kids would say and he used to he was a teacher who wrote adult literature actually oh. he wrote mysteries I think um, I could be wrong on the mysteries part, but I know he wrote like adult fiction, and his students were always like, "Why don't you write that something we could read?" And so yeah. then he did. That's why he picked that age group. Really? So I yeah. wonder, does he use a different name? When? Oh my gosh! Maybe yeah, he not. did. I think he did use it. Uh, he might He's not. He's got seven know. pages of books on. Yeah, good um, read. I can't remember if he used a different name or not. That's crazy. I had no idea. Yeah. Oh, and that's just so sweet. Every time they so talk sweet. about, you know, like a an author started to write because of their kids. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Definitely. That's so sweet. So, yeah, those are really interesting. If you like Greek mythology and like adventure, definitely a young, definitely for a younger demographic. Um, but, but again, he grows with you. He grows right? with you. And a, lot of the, and a lot of the characters grow with you, which is kind of cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So let's talk about the queen, Lee Bardugo. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> So, oh, whoops. we got the uh, pleasure of meeting her um, at yes, at the Fierce Reads party. Fierce Reads party that was right before BookCon. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's amazing. She she's was so sweet. Amazing. So, I think I might have talked about this on another episode. I can't remember, but probably <laughs> you love her. <laughs> she she might be scared of me. Um, when because we were so we were at this party and there's quite a few people there and you know we got to talk to a lot of amazing authors but like the second she walked in the room I was like oh my god oh my god it's Lee Bardugo <laughs> and you were like you need to calm down <laughs> so um but anyway so you know we got to talk to a bunch of different people but then I happened to look over and she was kind of free at the moment like no one mm-hmm. was talking to her and I was like we gotta go now <laughs> and I ran over and hugged her and I'm not a hugger and no. I don't and you're know not a talker who like I that. was in that moment but I needed to hug that woman and I did so and then anyway. you talked to her like I really didn't even talk that much and that's opposite for us <laughs> it's so weird but she's just ugh. she's the one that I always say if she wrote the telephone book I would yeah I was it. gonna say I know I'd be her um so I guess it started with Shadow and Bone, the Grishaverse yep. series, mm-hmm. the first three books. And then Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, which is set in the same universe, but it's a completely different cast of characters. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of the characters do kind of make little cameos. Yeah. But um, that's that's where it started was with Shadow and Bone because it's like she's just so good at building worlds. Yeah. And I saw her say something once about how when she, when she makes these worlds, mm-hmm. she wants to be able to – Write it so that, like, she feels like she could pick up a newspaper and know what would be exactly in that newspaper in this world. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So she's, like, it's so in-depth. Like, could you even imagine? Yeah, that's crazy. She's got to have, I mean, I don't know what her process is, but she's got to have, like, notebooks or something full of it. Of ideas. Or she, like, if she's, like, just sitting there thinking, like, oh, what would they eat? What's their favorite food? And, like, writes it all down. And Six of Crows has a lot of, like, different food references. Yeah. And it's great. Um, But then... So she's got another one coming out that's um, in that world, too. Okay. What's that, what was that uh, called again? King of Scars. That's King right. King of Scars, yeah. Because it's about Nikolai. And I pre-ordered it already. And so. he's amazing. <laughs> he's amazing. Yeah. When you finally read that series, you're going to fall in love with him, too. I know. Too. So I, side note, I own most of these books, have not read the series, <laughs> because I haven't had time, and I know that once I start, I you know me, I'm yeah. not going to be able to stop. I'm going to have to put everything else aside. Mm-hmm. So December, I actually didn't request it. I don't have any oh, books. So nice. I think that's when I'm going to set aside time to, like, read her entire series, yes. catch up, and then I'm just going to have to, like, digest all of it. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like it's going to be a lot to digest, but I'm very excited to do that. So she also came out this year with Wonder Woman Warbringer. Yes. And I, like, I'm not – I'm not a comics person. She and I don't mean that. Like, I, I really like graphic novels, yeah. but I'm not into, like, superheroes, I guess, is the thing. 
I not, love superheroes. So. I don't know why. Yeah. I mean, I like you every other to. nerdy thing. David doesn't, but, really, David doesn't really like superhero stuff either. But I, I'm obsessed with superhero stuff, and I have no idea why. I think it's because I wanted to be one when I was little. <laughs> but when I heard she was writing one of these, I was like, well, obviously I'm buying that. It's yeah. Lee Bardugo. Like, I yeah. obviously haven't read it yet. Again, time and all that. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, it's there on the bookshelf because it's Lee Bardugo. <laughs> so <laughs> it's going to get read. Exactly. And then she's got another book coming out next year. Mm-hmm. It's called The Ninth House. Completely Ooh. different genre. Completely different world. I believe it's, well, it says new adult contemporary. I thought maybe it was mystery-ish. Could be still. I mean. Yeah. But anyhow, it's called The Ninth House, and it looks like it's going to be out in October of next year. So we've got oh, a wow. while to wait. But I'm really excited to see what she does with a completely new series. Yeah. I love authors that can kind of do multiple series. So you yeah. You have to see, like, all the different sides of them. Because I don't think you should have to stick to anything if you don't right. want to. Right. And this to. one doesn't sound like it's fantasy. I mean, it did say um, something about an occult. So maybe there's some paranormal paranormal stuff in there but mm-hmm. it's not a fantasy world yeah and so, she's known for fantasy so i'm right. yeah that's really exciting one more thing about her before we move on so you know i said i would buy anything she's auto buy right oh no okay <laughs> so she announced i don't know a couple months ago that she's gonna sh- she's got this journal coming out yeah it's called the severed moon a year-long journal of magic um so then it says it's a bewitching journal filled with prompts and quotations from the imagination of lee bardugo and she announced this on her instagram like a couple months ago Mm -hmm. instantly i pre-ordered really (laughs) yeah it doesn't come out till january but (laughs) i pre-ordered i didn't even hear about that i'll take a look at it that's interesting so that's that's my crazy you're like all right i'm done (laughs) i'll stop talking about it that's my crazy (laughs) Well, I'll join into my crazy. So I am a little obsessed with this author, Siobhan Davis. Um, She's from Ireland. And I found her books actually because I had signed up for Kindle Unlimited when Mm -hmm. I got my Kindle. And you know how the government's always listening. Conspiracy. (laughs) No. Um, Basically, Facebook ads. Um, I had signed up for Kindle Unlimited. And so I was scrolling through Facebook and one of her books popped up. And I was like, okay, like Kindle Unlimited. I can read that for free. So I grabbed it and then... It was just so, it was one of those addicting books where I had to finish it. Well, of course, it was a series of five books. Oh, my so goodness. So I read all those five books. And then, like, after that, I was like, oh, I want more. Like, she's very good at doing plot twists. Like, okay. she's very good at, like, them coming out of nowhere. And, like, I'm pretty good at seeing what's going to happen mm-hmm. with contemporary and romance and stuff like that. Never can f- figure out really? where she's going. Ever. I'm like, remember that one I, I think I talked about on the podcast or maybe just when we were talking, the mm-hmm. one that, like, hit me and I was crying. And oh, David was yes. like, what's wrong? Like, that's one of those where I was like, I did not see that coming and now I'm bawling my eyes out. Oh. Or I didn't see that coming and now I'm in shock. Or now I didn't see that coming and I'm so happy. Like, it's yeah. just so many emotions you bring out, the, her books bring out so many emotions. Aww. So it's um, those are her. I've read all most of her romance books. Mm-hmm. I want to say almost all of them because um, I started signing up for her arcs just because I want to read them f- faster than everybody. Else. Yeah, because her yeah her books like I told you the one time like I had this book these books I needed to read her book came got sent to me I put <laughs> I put down everything and just read that the whole rest <laughs> of the night. I was like nope I've got to read this I've got to know what happens. Um, she also does sci-fi books. Oh, really? Yeah. And so I didn't know that. So I just found one. I just started it. Um, it is called, if I say um one more time, drink every time I say um. <laughs> it's called the Savin series. And okay. it's about this girl. I just started it. So don't, I'm, I don't really know that much. But it's about this, it's, it's in a different world. So it's like basically like you have the high class that's in the center and then the middle class and the lower class. And they are doing this program where it's this undersea world because they're trying to help overpopulation. And this girl who, like, she's pretty, but, like, her parent, all of her parents, like, her parents just rag on her. They, like, her family doesn't, lo- like, care about her that much. Only her sister does. And she had to, like, quit school at the age of 13 to, like, work. And she, like, loved books and loved learning. And she just dreams of, like, getting out. So she mm-hmm. signs up for this thing. And she wins. Oh, wow. And so that's where I'm at right now is that she's like finally getting to leave the lower class and she gets to go do this thing for six months and she's hoping that it will change her life. Mm -hmm. And her family is like, it's not going to change your life. But the sick sick thing is, is like if you win this, then your your family gets the money. Oh. And so that's why she did it to hope that her parents – so like her parents like as soon as they got the money transferred to their account, they were like, oh, okay, bye. 
Aww. So, like, already I'm, like, upset and yeah. mad. And then I'm, like, okay, but nothing better happen to her <laughs> or, or her sister. <laughs> I'm going to be so mad. So, yeah, I couldn't believe that she writes um, science fiction as well. Which, yeah. romance and science fiction are, like, my two faves. So, let's so go. So, I wonder <laughs> if the science fiction is going to have romance in it, too? I think so, because um, it's... Sean Davis. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I think so. And I'm and again, that's like my two favorite mixes, so I'm very excited to read that. The covers are really pretty. Yes. And then there's another there's another yeah, I love her covers. Because they're all like they're all like my favorite shades of colors, like the mm-hmm. blue, purple, pink. Yep. And then there's um there's also the Lost Savior series that I haven't oh, it's not called the Lost Savior series. It's called that's the first book in the in the Lynthia series, and I think that's about um Alien? Ooh, I see this one. The Warrior Princess is number three. Yes, that's what I. So yes. you haven't read those ones yet? No, but okay. I didn't. I didn't. I was so caught up in her as a romance author, I didn't mm-hmm. realize there was others until she actually promoted. Actually, the first two of the series. If you don't have, if they're all on Kindle Unlimited. That's what's okay. awesome about it. But if you don't have that, the first two of um, the Saving series are out for ninety nine cents. Oh wow! And I want to say the first one of fi- the ro- a lot of her romances are like around like they're they're under like four dollars it's mm-hmm. a it's a really and i i really enjoy all of her books so do you know if any of them are connected like any of the series the worlds or anything um finding the kennedy boys are all connected inseparable and incognito have um and when forever changes have like um interchanging characters okay uh and then everyone everyone else just sticks to a series okay. and this new world i don't know but i'm really excited because i read it and i was like oh okay underwater it's going to be set in modern day and then when I first started reading it, she was like, oh, the outer circle. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what is it? What is the outer circle? So I had to, like, slow down my reading and be like, oh, okay. So this is not what I'm picturing at all. Like, this is, like, the, basically the outer ring is, like, po- like like what you kind of picture in, like, um, Divergent. Oh, okay. How it's, like, de- decrepit. So decrepit New York City is where it's set. Oh, okay. And so, like, they have to, like, the outer lower class has to use the old subways, which crash and all the time uh-huh. and everybody all the new all the middle class and old um um first class get like new transitions and they know how who you are by stars so gold star is high um first class or mm-hmm. whatever that class is called high high class first class yeah middle middle class <laughs> is silver and then lower classes is, is bronze oh, okay you know what that <laughs> this is really dumb and random but okay. you know what that reminds me of what Dr. Seuss, Sneetches. They have Star oh, Belly Sneetches. God. <laughs> I was like, not expecting that. You're like, stars, because I thought you were going to say it was like a chip or something. Oh, no. A star. So it's a Star Belly Sneetches. Oh, my. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, I did not see I have you children that way at all. I was like, oh, so I'm thinking like you're going to talk about another book or another author. No. Nope. Hey, it is a book. And an author. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's for children. I have children. <laughs> you do? I do. I thought you had two gremlins. <laughs> well, that's also true. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, if you are into any of that kind of books, um, I recommend. I mean, I recommend everybody we're talking about. Uh, yeah, obviously. Auto buy. Auto buy. Please go buy all of their books and join us. Join us. Join us. Oh, my God. People are going to be Two like, episodes in a row. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. Sorry, not sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> okay, so another one that is on... You know, both of our auto buy lists. Mm-hmm. Morgan Matson. Because she's the sweetest human being on this planet. She's amazing. <laughs> We've got to meet her as well. Yes. She's one of the first books we read for BookCon. Yeah. Well, because I think 16. 2016. Um, I like blazed through all of her books except Second Chance Summer. Yeah, because she told us when she when we got it. When but I, I had read all the other ones before BookCon. Yeah. And then we got there, and she, she was signing my Second Chance Summer, and she's like, I'm so sorry. Well, she said to both of us. Yeah. And she's we're like, like, why? Yeah. She's like, this is going to make you cry. And we're like, okay, well, we're not going to read it for a while. <laughs> she said she gets, like, um, you know, emails and stuff from fans, that, <laughs> the, like, pictures of their mascara running down oh, their really? face. Yeah. Because oh. she's like, it's just so sad. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, so to be fair... That one, and then her newest one that just came out this year, Save the Date, are mm. the only two I haven't read because I'm terrified of crying. <laughs> I know. I don't want to cry. And um, I've read, and I haven't read The Unexpected Everything yet. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. But I loved Amy Rogers' Epic mm-hmm. Detour. And I made since, my mom read that one. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I like Since You've Been Gone. I really yes. enjoyed, like, the friendship of that mm-hmm. one. And that girl and that, reminded me so much of you. I really like the list, too. Yes. Like, how she's got to do all these things because... 
that's something I would have have to do for you. Yeah, because I, <laughs> I need to get out of my shell. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I really like that one. Um, but I've, Amy and Rogers, I really like the, I don't know what they call that in books where there's like stuff. <gasps> like it's not yeah. just a written book. There's like playlists and mm-hmm. there's receipts and pictures. And pictures and postcards and, and yeah. stuff like that in the book. And it's yeah. really cool. So it makes you feel like you're there. Yeah. Right? Yeah, what is that called? But it's I really think, interesting. I think that was one where I started it, I don't know, like 8 o'clock at night when the kids went to mm-hmm. bed and I read it all night. Like I couldn't put it See? down. It's just so good. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I like about her though. She's like, I, I know that... <sighs> Like, people will say reliable and it almost has a negative connotation, but that's not what I – like, she's reliable in that I know I'm going to love her books. Like, I don't yeah. even care what it's about. I know I'm going to love it. Mm-hmm. And um, – It makes you – they. I think they have – they make you have a feel-good feeling. Yeah. You feel good when reading them. And her books are, like, like turning to your best friend mm-hmm. when you need comfort. Yeah, because there are a lot of them about friendships, and it's yeah. just really – you don't really find a lot of that without any turmoil. And they're a little bit – I mean – a little bit since you've been gone, but it, it doesn't focus on that. It focuses on friendships and mm-hmm. and growing as a person, really. Yeah. So you just, you know what you're going to get with her, and it's all it's like, great. It's like comfy. Yeah, it is. It's They're comfy reads, and yeah. they're good for, like, you know, getting out of reading slumps. Because, like I said, you Definitely. start it, and you're like, well, I have to finish this now. Exactly. <laughs> like, it's just so good. Yeah, I really enjoy them. I'm not looking forward to crying, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one, man. Mm-hmm. It's going to take me a while before I read that, because I just... I avoid crying at all costs. <laughs> same. <laughs> same. Or you, like, want to, like, read it if you're wanting a good cry, not... Yeah. Good, yeah. I got to be in a real something mood yeah. to want a good cry. <laughs> a real specific mood. Which one did you say you haven't read? Unexpected Everything? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's one... I feel like you have to read it in the summertime. Okay. It's a really good summertime read. Okay. It's adorable. Mm. It's so adorable. I can't wait. All right, so our list is dwindling down. I think we have one left. Yep, right. That's it. And so this one, it's Maeve Binchy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think you've read any of her stuff, right? No, I haven't. I have so, them on my TBR list, but I haven't read them yet. Her books. Let me hold on. Let me click on one. So yeah, they're generally listed as romance. So you know, I oh feel hey, like that would appear, appeal to you. Um, they're also listed as like chick lit, but they're just like a lot of times they're about. Like a group of friends or a group of people. Yeah. And she's just so good at writing people and, you know, how everything kind of fits together. Oh, I love those kind of books. Like um, this this first one on the list that I see is called Tara Road. Okay. And if I remember correctly, it's about, you know, different families or different people that live on this road and just, you know, what happens over time with these people. And then sometimes some of her books, like the characters are in other ones. I love that. They're just so good. My mom got me started on her, and um, she did pass away a few years ago. Oh. I think in 2012. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if we go to – because we like to go to secondhand bookstores. Yes. And if we go to those, I'm always looking for her books. They're, oh, I always seem to find them, mm-hmm. and I'm trying to fill my shelf so I have all of hers because oh, they're awesome. just so good. And they're, they're those books that you can read over and over again Yeah. because, you know, there's so much detail and stuff. You don't remember everything. Mm-hmm. But – just, I really like stories that intertwine characters, mm-hmm. and I love the story of like growing family, growing. Well, yeah, because well. like there's, um, I can't think of which one it is, but anyway, like a lot of them, you follow people from, you know, you see them when they're kids, and then mm-hmm. you follow them as they grow into adulthood, and they're just so good. Oh. They're they're another one of those like they're com- they're comfort comfy books. Reads. Yeah, yes, comfort. Oh. I I feel like I get a lot of the same feelings with her as I do with Morgan Madsen, mm-hmm. but these books are written for adults rather yeah. than YA, mm-hmm. so. Yay. Oh, I'm going to have to read some of those. Yes. Like just, oh. um, I've got a lot of them, so you can borrow some. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Now, yes, we have another quiz. Yay. Um, some viewers <laughs> thought it was pretty fun, so we thought we'd throw in another one for this week. Yes. I thought I had it open. Just give me a second. I got to um, open it back up. It's um, an epic reads quiz, and it's called We Can Guess Your Age Based on Your Bookshelf. So we're very interested to see what our ages would yeah. be. Yeah. <laughs> I thought this would be fun this week because so many of our authors that we love are YA authors. Definitely. So, you know, like, there, there's another, like, stigma with YA. Definitely. Like, it's marketed towards teens, but... Listen, they're amazing books, and yeah. anyone can read them and find enjoyment in them. Exactly. So, um, so do, do this quiz with us. 
Yes. And then let us know. We'll what link you it get. down below. Yes. Tweet at us. Let us know. Because I really want to know still what people got with the wolves. Okay. Yeah. I got a couple <laughs> and I got and I made them screenshot it to me so I could see because I want to read about the different wolves. So mm-hmm. definitely screenshot it, screenshot it and let us um let us know what you get. Yay. Okay, so I just predictions. I'm I have a feeling this is gonna um yeah, let's, skew let's me guess. low. Let's I think guess. it's gonna say that I'm younger than I am. Okay, I think it's like gonna nineteen. Say... I bet you it's gonna say right around nineteen. Okay, that's yeah. my guess. <laughs> um, I'll guess like yeah, I'll guess like twenty one. Yeah, for me. Okay. okay. All right. First question. All right. What color is your bookshelf? Ooh. So which one? <laughs> yeah. So the so... options are pictured, and there's a blue, brown, white, or metal. It looks I think like that's black. The first one. Mine looks blue. Oh, well, either way, it's a dark color, right? <laughs> it could oh. be the co- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it could be the color on my camera. So, yeah, black or blue, mm-hmm. brown, white, or metal. I'm, I've am i got white shelves. I have white and shelves. And I have brown but, shelves. I really like the mm, – I like the black ones a lot. But it says what color is your bookshelf. Don't so lie correct, to fine. them. So, correct, it's white. <laughs> fine. Fine. Listen, I picked that's white as well. hat, okay? <laughs> and they were fun to put together. <laughs> <laughs> Not – one of mine is – the leaning tower of pisa <laughs> you're like it's fine it's fine it's, whatever hold books okay <laughs> all right next question which style is your favorite all right so you want to explain so it? the first one is just it looks like a regular bookshelf mm-hmm. they've got pretty normal yep uh they've got books um sitting up top as well as in the shelves mm-hmm. the next one kind of looks like a well a ladder yeah it looks like a ladder shelf um, and then the next one looks like a tree. Oh, I love the tree one. I do too. And then the final one is like blocks. Yeah, geometric blocks. shape blocks. Yeah. yeah. So I think I'm going to pick the tree. That's my favorite. Oh, dang it. We're going to be the same. <laughs> um, I'll pick the normal one. Boring. Uh, I'm trying not to match you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Third one? Yeah. How do you organize your books? Ooh. By color, by author. By genre or by title? Um, where's fifth? You just throw them on a bookshelf because that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess mine are... Mm, mine no. are by author. But, yeah, I guess mine are by author, but they're not alphabetical. They're by author and by genre? Mine are by author. <laughs> I'm going to say that's by only, genre. That's the only reason I can find anything. I have all of my like contemporary books on one shelf. Oh, and then, then you're definitely yeah. genre. I'm by author. All right, next question. Question four. And how do you position your books for <laughs> this them? This is great. Um, okay, so the first one, it looks like they're all stacked um, with the binding out. Yep, and they're like rainbow. And they're rainbow colored. The second one is... It's a little fancier. Yeah, it's fancier. It looks like it's by color, but then... But it's, it's kind of like how... um, It's kind of looks how... um. Barnes and Noble does it. Yeah, like some of the books are facing facing the, the cover covers out. facing out. Yep, and then <laughs> the rest are the bindings of that series. Mm-hmm. The, the third one is <laughs> some are on the shelves, some are stacked in front of the shelves. <laughs> a mess, basically. <laughs> yes. And the fourth one is the books with the pages out first mm-hmm. and not the bindings. That which, was like a thing for a while. Really? Yeah. I was like, that bothers me. <laughs> I mean, I, I really like the look of it, but I would be so annoyed when I'm trying to find a book. Yeah. Yeah. I would be like, I can't find anything. This is stupid. <laughs> so, okay, if I'm being honest, how I position them is the mess. I know. So I'm same. Picking, like, that's what, like every shelf I have, there's books on the shelf, but then there's books stacked in front of it. Too. Yeah. Or stacked, <laughs> just shoved in there when I need room. Yep. So mine's the mess as well. Yeah. All right. What genre do you have the most of? Fantasy, sci fi, contemporary, or romance? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I think physical books. Yeah. Let's go physical. Okay. I think mine's fantasy. Mine will have to be fantasy. I, I own a lot of Kindle romance oh. books. Well, we could do either. Either? Yeah, either. Romance then. Because I have, I, like, my Kindle is full of oh, fantasy and romance. I don't know. I'll go romance, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Are there any special editions? One or two? A few? Nope. <laughs> uh, a special few. editions. I love special editions. So we, like, um, the, like the ones that come ones? in Alcrate. Alcrate, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, so a few. Yep. Same Z's. How often do you reorganize? Oh, this is hilarious. <laughs> when I get a new fave, whenever I feel like it, about once a month, or I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't is me. <laughs> I always think about reorganizing, and I really want to, but it just never happens. I just reorganize, but does that count? 
So whenever I feel like it. Yep, let's do that one for me. <laughs> yeah, mine, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't. I do not do that. <laughs> All right. Next question. What do you do when you run out of room? <laughs> I make more room. <laughs> Buy a new bookshelf. Stacks on stacks. <laughs> donate old books. Donate. Oh, uh, you know, uh, I get rid of some books sometimes, but it's very few. And yeah. it's usually duplicates. Yep. So stack on stacks. Yeah. That's me. One thousand um, percent. I think mine's buy a new shelf because that's what I did. I've done that in the past, but man, stacks. I'm running out of yeah, room for you shelves. Do stacks. <laughs> All right. Calculating. <laughs> Watch is gonna say Oh yeah. my god. Oh no. <laughs> You're we got 16. 16. We both got 16. I'm, 16. I'm a grandmother. I'm a grandmother. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Even lower than I assumed. Wow. Is it because I'm a mess? <laughs> Are you trying to say we're hot messes? <laughs> Epic reads. How dare you? <laughs> I feel attacked. <laughs> I am not 16. <laughs> I'm right. Oh, my gosh. That's great. Whoops. So we're both 16. <laughs> I would love to know what you guys get. Yeah, same. And at the below, <laughs> same at the bottom, it says you decorate your bookshelf with passion and your phase in mind, and we can definitely appreciate that. But we're not 16. <laughs> <laughs> not even close. I mean, that's true. Like, so I have a shelf for Harry Potter. I have a shelf yep. for Am- Outlander. Yep. I have a shelf for Lee Bardugo. Mm-hmm. I have a shelf for Lainey Taylor. Yeah. But then everything else is just kind of thrown in there. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Like, mine's like Harry Potter. Um, yeah. Um, Leah Bardugo, mm-hmm. Lainey Taylor, Twilight. Because um, I have the Funko Pops. Yeah. See, that's um, the thing. Like, if I have extra fandom stuff, then they kind of have their own shelf. Exactly. Yeah, that's kind of how it is. Or if it's like, I love them so much, I want to treasure yeah. them. Yeah. Um, I f- I like. I feel like a weirdo with like a shrine to Lee Bardugo because yeah, she's got it. Kind of looks shelf. like I have three. I have three Harry Potter shelves. I'm like, okay, this is a little crazy. So we have to calm down. Well, I guess we're 16. So let us know how old you are yeah. in bookshelf years. <laughs> My bookshelf is 16. That's actually possible with a few of them. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Listen, I'm old. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> I won't talk about it anymore. Yeah, I have an old bookshelf that was um, in a library. So, oh, that's right, yeah. and I'm real jealous of it. I love I it so much. It. <laughs> I want it. Give me it. I'm gonna steal it from your house. No, it's gonna be real <laughs> difficult, but I'm gonna get it out. <laughs> I'm sure it'll turn into a leaning bookshelf. <laughs> Listen, so that's the shelf that Alex made me put together by myself. Oh. Which I followed all the directions. I don't know how us making the shelf together <laughs> makes it better, but. Well, the reason I had to buy new bookshelves is because I had this smaller, not so well put together one. And I was like, oh, I can just, I don't have to clean off the books. I can just move it across the floor. And I shoved it and it just went over. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I caught it, yelled for help, had David help me pull out the books because I didn't really care about anything else. I just wanted to save my books. And then it just toppled over. And I was like, oh, well, no. I guess I should get a new one. And then I bought two. <laughs> Whoopsies. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Every time I get a new shelf, Alex is like, well, it's probably going to be a while before this is full, right? I'm like, just give me five minutes. Yeah, like, just let me organize it real quick. Hold on. Close and then eyes. it's full, and he's like, what? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I, we need a library, man. We do. I just started <laughs> stacking them high on my on my shelves. So I had a friend come over, and she was looking. She's like, oh, cute. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. I just, I run out of room, so I started stacking them and then putting, like, plants on top of them. So, so it looks cute. <laughs> I saw a hack on Facebook the other day, which I thought was pretty genius. Um, people were asking, like, do you save your owl crate boxes or do you throw them away? And a lot of people were like, oh, I'll just get rid of them. Like, yeah. Who doesn't? Or Me. recycle, whatever. So this other person said they keep them. And, like, you know, on, like, a lot of these shelves that you put together, the bottom shelf is really big. Yeah. So they have the owl crate box in there. And so they have books on top of them and then in front of them. So you don't see the boxes, but it creates more space on your oh, shelf. So you can still cute. see all your books. Yeah. I'm like, that's really genius. That's a really good idea. I mean, that's way better than stacks on stacks, which is what I do. <laughs> I just like stack, <laughs> stack stuff in front of the bookshelf. Oh, or, so like, do I. Wherever it fits. Yep. Or next to it, on top of it. <laughs> All the places. Because yep. uh, we're not going to stop. Books. Can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> I was just telling um, Weston or Raylan, I don't know, one of the boys the other day that I was like, so you know how mommy's got all these bookshelves and there's all these books there? I said, my closet also has a tote <laughs> full of books <laughs> that aren't even displayed. They're just... They're just there. Tucked away. 
It's terrible. I used to have that. I used to hide them from David. Now they're just stacked on the bookshelf. See, I these are hidden. I just don't want to. I don't want to get rid of any of them. Yeah, they're my books that I want to read when I'm old and grand. Oh <laughs> my! <laughs> when I don't have this insane TBR full of books that I have to read. Oh, I think we're. All, I think we're always going to have that insane TBR. I don't think uh, that's going to go I, anywhere. You know, a girl can dream. Yeah. I wonder, like <laughs> in like five years, how many books we're going to have read. Like, that's the great thing about Goodreads is that you can keep track of, like, all the books you've read. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just can't wait to see how many. It definitely increases every year. Yeah, definitely. Did I tell you um, I was reading for this class we had to take at work? Not for it. I'm sorry. We were on our lunch break and I was reading. Mm -hmm. And my boss was sitting next to me and he's like, are you seriously reading right now? I'm like, yeah, what else am I? I mean, everyone's eating. Like, what else am I going to do? Yeah. So I was reading. He's like, what is that? Like, your 50th book this year? And I was like more like 72 yeah <laughs> he's like are you kidding me <laughs> oh <Nope>, sorry <laughs> like i'd love to read i can't help it man <laughs> okay well we better get going we've got more tea to drink and books to read you can find us on social media our instagram is our life and books underscore our twitter is also our life and books underscore our email is our life and books at gmail.com and we have a facebook that yes, I was we do have of. a Facebook. And you can just search Our Life and Books on Facebook, yeah. I think. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's like facebook.com backslash Our Life and Books. All right, great. Um, and then I wanted to say that the podcast is now basically everywhere you can listen to a podcast. Yes, I'm so excited. So do you want to list where they're all at? So it's on Podbean, mm-hmm. iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify. Spotify, and then YouTube. <laughs> we put the we yes. put the audio on YouTube as well, unless you want to listen. Yeah, so almost any pod catcher that you have, anything Definitely. where you listen to podcasts, hopefully we're there. If we're not, let us know and we can try and get Figure on out there. the issues. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, my Instagram is Bookish State of Mind. My Twitter is Samantha McCombs. And my website is Samantha McCombs. You can find me on Instagram at Bookish Connoisseur. I'm on Twitter, Bookish Buff. And then my blog is Bookish Connoisseur.com. Woo! Let us know if you like and uh, what you liked and. Yes, and your age on the quiz and yes. who your auto buy authors are. Yes, because of what if we're missing out on some We're definitely missing out. <laughs> All right, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.